I wanted to take a moment to talk about what happened last week in the U.S. Capitol building. We can take that place and then do what? Heads on point. President Trump, he asked us to come out and support him, and I was glad to do that. Stop the steal! Stop the steal! We will never give up, we will never concede, and we're going to the Capitol. First of all, it was a very sad and dark day. And it was also one that was filled with resilience because the lawmakers and politicians reconvened as soon as the melee was over and did not let it get in the way of the job they were there to do. But the lawlessness and having it be egged on by the president and some others within the government and certainly by his very willing followers, was alarming to many, but shocking to almost no one who has lived through a regime of this kind and who has been in cults or a controlled environment where they were caught up in a mission, whether it made any sense or not. When you see the people who ran into and barged their way into the Capitol, you see a ragtag group of people carrying Confederate flags, people who were QAnon followers, people who were predicting that the storm was coming, and I suppose this meant maybe that the storm had arrived. Others who are just Trump supporters and still others who are racist, sexist, homophobic, white nationalists, and boldly anti-Semitic with shirts that said things like Camp Auschwitz on them makes my skin crawl. The Proud Boys also, with their insignia, 6MWE, standing for six million wasn't enough, referencing the amount of Jews killed in the Holocaust. Well, they were right there for everyone to see, wearing these t-shirts proudly, being Proud Boys, and I think not realizing there is nothing to be proud of by having messages of hate written across your chest. It only proves that you are totally unhinged. The bold behavior by the people who were tearing things down and breaking glass and sitting at legislators' desks and destroying property says something about mimicry and permission and how it causes a great air of entitlement. By mimicry, I mean that their behavior mimics their leader, Donald Trump's, and some of his sub-leaders who have now become more obvious to the public that he can be very base with his base, as he's always been, and tacky and making fun of people with handicaps, calling women awful names, doing awful things to them, putting kids in cages, treating immigrants like criminals, destroying basically so much in people's lives, being anti-mask, and participating in the destruction of so much human life, and getting away with it. Being impeached during his presidency And having nothing happen to him as a result was a frightening day for me and for all those who know what happens when a narcissist gets away with very bad things over and over because it just creates a monster or at least a bigger monster. And it gives the followers unspoken or even sometimes spoken permission to feel that they can do whatever they want and get away with it too. I think by them posting selfies of themselves doing these sorts of things, they were not potentially thinking that there would be any consequence. And why would they? Because if the president of the United States, who they follow, has gotten away with all these sorts of things, why can't they? As they are much less important. When you see the pictures of the rioters, some there with militant gear and weapons and clear intention, while others were just joining, jumping into the fun, as they probably saw it, feeding off of the energy of the moment and being driven by the sense that this was somehow their right and their duty and their honor as Americans. But when you also see pictures of some of these people with the looks on their faces of anger and even righteous indignation about anyone trying to stop them, you see how entitled they feel. They were so worked up into a frenzy that there was almost nothing that was going to stop them and people died that day, and that day should never have happened. In fact, the police had been forewarned. 
The Anti-Defamation League and others were alerting them to the danger they predicted on that day and other upcoming significant governmental days for months beforehand, but it was all ignored. And you have to wonder why. If the rioters had been black also, they would have been killed. If the rioters had been Muslim, they would have been killed. But white rioters confuse policemen, it seems, and they don't know what to do and don't feel right, it appears, to use deadly force on them. There will be more incidences as Trump is playing out his narcissistic injury because he's mad that he lost and he wants everyone to pay. Lao Tzu said, an evil enemy will burn his own nation to the ground to rule over the ashes. Well, according to that, that makes Trump the enemy. And while I'm speaking about what happened that day, this is a bigger issue. It shows how easily people can be controlled, how they can be pushed to the point where all good sense is gone, how they would be willing to do anything for this cause. But what cause is it? There really isn't one. It was all created by Trump. He stoked a fire by feeding conspiracy theories. He stoked a fire by lying. And he lied so often, even that day, that the lie became truth in so many people's minds. It's a technique used in dictatorships, used by Nazis, and talked about by historians and sociologists like Eric Fromm and even George Orwell, who wrote 1984, among others. Trump should never have been given this power. They say you find out a lot about a person when you see how they use the power given to them. He's not a statesman. He's a self-serving cult leader. And frighteningly, there are many millions of people around the world who still feel he was a good president. And that, my friends, is truly mind-boggling to me. Trump said after seeing footage of the rioting that he was embarrassed by the tackiness of his followers, which shows, actually, that he has allegiance to no one other than himself. But, Mr. Trump, you attracted these kinds of people, and that's on you. As they say, you can tell a lot about a person by the company they keep. Mm -hmm.